shout hallelujah. So when I announced this love is then at our former venue, I thought I was not going to teach, I was not going to exalt you guys. You see, but yesterday night I was trying to exalt you in my heart. <laughs> I was trying to exalt you in my heart. I was exalting you. I was, I was exalting you. Looking at you and exalting you. You see, but I found that the Lord will have me teach you this morning. You know, you don't have me exalt you, you have me teach you. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So they will be teaching you this morning, and it's very important. All, all love we have been teaching is very, very important. You see, because that, that has to be the foundation of the church. Amen. Amen. That has to be what the of the church. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you all the glory, honor, and adoration. Bless us this morning. Show us your heart. Show us your face. Baptize us with your love. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Once again, welcome to church. I'm happy to see everybody in church. Glory to Jesus. I'm happy to see everybody in church. And I know it's a great day already. Today is our love is can we appreciate Jesus? I tell you, I'm not appreciating Jesus. I appreciate Jesus. We were here yesterday. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Amen. You see, I don't want the what we call love feast. Eh? I don't want to be lost on us. Some of us don't know the meaning. Do you understand? So that's why I find that the way we have me teach you this morning. Praise God forevermore. Because you see, love feast eh, is a feast eh, that arises as a result of love. Are you understanding me? Love feast is not that we are gathering to eat and drink. It's not that we are gathering to exchange gifts. Are you understanding me? Love feast is a feasting together of the people of God that is as a result of the culture of love in their midst. Eh? So, it is a, a celebration and recognition of the culture of love. Are you hearing me? It's also a way to be baptized in the spirit of love. But it's Jesus forevermore. So, let me have to speak to us this morning about love one another. Can you say love one another? Love one another. What we are looking at this morning is what? Love. Can you say love one another? Look at one and say love one another. You see, love is the foundation of the church. And love has to be the foundation of the church. Are you understanding me? Because you see, everything started because of love. For God so loved. Are you understanding me? So, if you remove love, Jesus would not come. Are we still together? And if Jesus did not come, the church would not exist. You just know what? Exist. So, the existence of the church is as a result of love. Uh, so, if the church is built on love, the church has to grow on love. You see, the church will not be healthy without love. Are you understanding me? You see, if the church grows numerically, are you brothers and sisters? If a church grows numerically, Without love, this love of Christ, are you hearing me? It will still be a weak church. Are we understanding now? You see, a church of 10 members uh, that are bound together by the love of Christ, are you understanding me? Is stronger, more effective, more relevant, has more meaning. Are you understanding? Satan is afraid of it. Than a church of 10 million members that has no love. Are you understanding me? In a city, in a nation, 
Are you hearing me? I'm telling you that a church of ten members that have the love of God in their midst is more relevant than a church of ten million people that have no love. Are you understanding me? You see, and if that church of ten members, if they continue in his love, are you understanding me? You see, eventually we'll find out that there they is no limit to their growth, even numerically. Because love grows things. Can you say love grows things? Love grows things. Can you say love grows things? Love grows the church. Are you understanding me? Praise God forevermore. Love grows things. Are we still together now? Shout hallelujah. Love one another. Can you, can you say love one another? You see, a church is on its way to destruction when there's no love. Huh? Does it matter how successful they might appear to be in the present? Eh? When you evacuate love from the midst of the church, the church is heading towards perdition. It will be destroyed. Are you understanding me? Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Love what? One another. Look at John chapter 13 from verse 34. A new commandment I give unto you. Now, Jesus was here beginning to speak about how he needed to die and all of that. I needed to go. Are you understanding me? So, this is, this is like a father giving some final words to his children. Are we still together? A father doing what? Giving a final word to what? To his children. He's about to go. You see, you see, and experience has taught us that when people are close to their dead, we tend to hear the most important things from them. Are you understanding me? Are we together? Are you sure? Yes, sir. When people are close to their death, we tend to hear what? The most important. We tend to hear secrets from them. <laughs> are you understanding me? You see, there are some secrets a man will never tell until he's on his deathbed. Do you know why? Because he's already on his deathbed. So, no matter how serious that secret is, he has only to lose again. <laughs> Are you understanding me? He has what? He has only to lose. He will be battling with the secret. <laughs> Are you understanding me? You see, when he still has like 10 years, 20, 50, 30 years to lose on it, he is not going to tell the secret. But the secret he won't tell. Many people can use it against him. <laughs> Are you understanding me? Because he can still learn from it, he doesn't make the same mistakes, or so that he can get things done. Do you understand? But most people will keep it because women are wicked. They can use it. But when they're on their dead bed, eh, they say, My wife, I'm so sorry. There's something I need to tell you before I go to meet the Lord. You see? Because, because it's sure he's going to meet the Lord. Because <laughs> after telling my wife, let him to die. So she can't fight me. <laughs> because after telling her and I die, then you say, oh no, come back, you cannot die, you cannot die, you see? But if I was alone and I said that, say, hey, you do something like that, you are a wicked man. <laughs> <laughs> you are a very wicked man. With me, I have loved you with all my life. You are a wicked man. <laughs> I don't understand what I'm saying. So who are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. You are a very wicked man. You see, but when he's about to die and he says, the wife is saying, yeah, she's not in the gravity of what he's saying. And for that, this man should not die. So that after you're saying, don't die, please don't die, I beg you, I beg you, I forgive you. You see, if the man will take me, not die. <laughs> <laughs> if the man will take me, not die. I'll live for another five years. If we hear away, if we hear away, if you tell my face you are forgiving now, it doesn't matter. Please don't come to me, don't die. Hey! The man better die. <laughs> if you don't want to die, I have to do this quickly. Because if he does not die, he's taking me for another one year, two years, three years. Ah! The man will deal with it. <laughs> are you understanding me? What was the point here? You see, when people are talking close to when they're about to land up their lives, they have to pay attention. 
Are you hearing me? You have to what? Pay attention. Praise Jesus, Lord and God. So one of the things that Christ said when he was nearing the time of his departure, he says, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Oh, this was serious. A new what? A new commandment. You see, the first thing that, that is truly here is that he calls it a commandment. He calls it what? A commandment. I can't hear you. He calls it a commandment. What is the command? What meaning of the commandment? We are not seeking your opinion. It is not optional. I'm not asked whether you feel like that or not. I'm not asked whether you feel like it or not. I want it done. Oh my. You see, we need to beg God to have mercy on us. As a church, as Christians, as believers. Because for long we have been living in disobedience. Because when you look, you see, when you extract the church, you will find out that much of it is no love. And our Jesus says that loving one another is what? A commandment. Are you understanding now? So it means to not love one another is to what? Is to live in disobedience. Are we still together now? Praise the Lord. A new commandment I give unto you. Are you understanding me? You see? So you see, even though you are trying to obey Jesus in many other things, are you understanding me? If you are disobeying him here, you are still disobeying him. Are you hearing me now? Can you still love one another? So, to love one another is a command from the mouth of the master himself. Are you understanding me? You see, and he's not asking our opinion. Hey, you know what this is saying? It means he's not telling you love her if she's lovable. Eh? He's not saying love her when you feel like it. He's not saying love him because he's a good person. He says love one another. I'm, I command you. Hey, you are in trouble, Christian. So. And this guy, this guy, you are going to become like Jesus as you being. Are you understanding me? This is a serious matter, and that is the that is the peak of love. Like you can love people who are unlovable. Like you can love people who are annoying. When the people who don't deserve, you know why people don't deserve to be loved? You know why people don't deserve to be loved? But you do that. It's only you that know that. It's only you that know that. You know that I don't know. He said, "Love one another." Do you know some people in church could be irritating to you? Eh? You know, not you know, not irritating. Like saying, like it's just them. They're just like the way they behave or something. That like, these guys themselves is not like just annoying you. You see, the reason is this: there is no love. Are you hearing me now? So Jesus Christ says that loving one another is a command that we must adhere to. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So our Jesus has given us a command. And what is that command? To love one another. So if they are truly living for him as our Lord, if they are truly living in obedience to him, you must be found doing what? You see, loving one another is higher than paying for one another. You hear me? Are you hearing me? Love, love one another is what? It's higher than pay for one another. It's higher than giving to one another. It's higher than anything you can do for one another. You, you, you know why? Because if you love one another, you do every other thing for one another. Are you understanding me? If, I'm, if I love her, I'm going to pray for her. If I love her, I'm going to give to her. If I love her, I'm going to give to her. Are you hearing me now? But you, you see, I'm going to show you something that is so serious. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. How? As I have loved you. That ye also love one another. You see, I was thinking in the night when he says a new commandment I give unto you. 
I was thinking that where did he give them an old command? Did he give them an old command? Why is this a new command? Did he believe that they are giving them a commandment before? So who can tell me the meaning of this? A new commandment. I give unto you. Who can tell me the meaning of this scripture? Come and tell me. <laughs> you know, it is a commandment. It's a new commandment. That means he must have. This is English now. That means he must have given them a commandment before. Okay. So, I think he was referring to commandment in the Old Testament. You love the Lord your God. Then, love your neighbor as yourself. That's what he knew. Awesome. Can you hear me appreciate Pastor Sonny? If you have to marry a woman of God, so that God has to embarrass your family in public. Amen. Amen. How to marry a woman of God has to embarrass your family in public. Amen. You see, the real, that is the command. The meaning, why it applies is, as I have loved you. So, there is, you see, and this is another proof, this is another proof that Jesus Christ is God. He said, a new commandment I give you. That means I'm giving them an old commandment before. That was when God gave them the Ten Commandments. So that means it was Jesus that gave them that commandment. You see, there are proofs, a lot of proofs. If we also read the Bible, it says, A new commandment I give you. Are you understanding me? That means he gave them a commandment some time ago. An old one. So that means it's is God. But let's believe that. So he has given them a commandment before in the Old Covenant. That they should love their neighbor as what? As themselves. That is the old commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Are you understanding me? You see? But Jesus Christ found out that you see, you might not even love yourself enough. Are you understanding me? That we now have to change the degree of this love. We have to change the intensity of this love. You see? So people don't know themselves that they can hurt themselves. You know what? people hurt themselves. Some people hurt themselves. Some people, some people do dangerous things that can harm them. Some people, if, some people commit suicide. They don't, they don't love themselves. Are you hearing me? Some people can say, you see, that, that love your neighbor as yourself. You have to change it too. We have to change it. We have to change it. too. And you see, then they didn't have the capacity to do it at this level. <laughs> Are you not telling me? The young man was speaking with reference to the coming of the Spirit when they become the new creation. So something will happen to them that will ma- enable them to be able to love at the highest level. Because you see, Jesus loving us is the highest level of love can ever express. Are you understanding me? You know, that boy is even is not the highest level. It's even if he buys you an iPhone 16 Pro and Ferrari and say, I love this time my life. It's not the highest level. The highest love that can be given and received is the love of Jesus. Are you understanding me now? So you know, Christ knows that it's possible for human beings, a person, to not even love himself enough. Are you understanding me? So it says we now have to change the game plan. So I'm giving you a new commandment. Love one another. And don't forget this one another is talking about the church. The believers. The church. It says love one another, one another how? As I have loved you. Hey! You are in trouble, Christians. So. How should we how should we love one another? As Jesus has loved us. That means he has to love this guy. As Jesus loves him. As Jesus loves us. Are you understanding me? You see, Jesus loves us without his salvation. He loves us without grumbling. He loves us and doesn't plan to give up. He loves us without condition. You see, do you know you can love someone before and not love the person again? No, yes, now. Eh? Some of you have been in 555 relationships before. <laughs> no, no, you don't love the person. You don't love the person again. <laughs> Is that not true? So you don't love the person, you don't love the person again. You love, you don't love again. <laughs> eh? You don't love again. You don't love again. Uh, so long this man. She's innocent, too. She's innocent. Amen. She has never loved that kind of love before. It's only Jesus Christ's love that she knows. 
，你不要回答我。哎，白天我干啥子呢？老板了，那一个有，那一个有，我拍啥子机器有？我拍啥子机器有呢？啊！一百多几十，没有一百一百多几十，不打开六天。有好多富人都是 bad ones， 大家怕你们不晓得。Amen。They've been just you now of all the love. But that guy, I don't love him again, guys. It's full out of love. Amen. So human beings have the capacity to love and to stop loving. Are you understanding me? Hey, but you see this Jesus. When he loves his own, he loves them to the end. Uh, that's also in John. Are you hearing me now? When he what? When he loves his own, he loves them to when? Hey, can I talk to brothers and sisters? You see, the love of man has a limit, but the love of Jesus has no limit. Hmm. You see, it's easy to love the man when the person is behaving properly. Are you understanding me? This one very time is busy. You might not really, you might not hate the person, no. But you just not love the person. You know, it's also not love somebody, but to not hate the person. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying to you. Yes, are you, are you still with me, or sister? You know, you might not hate somebody, but you, you, you just don't love the person. You are no trap to the person. <laughs> you see, Jesus Christ is not neutral. Are you understanding me? Yes, sir. It's one way to hide the fact that you don't love somebody is, is neutrality. Mm -hmm. You are just neutral. You are neutral. You see, you, you see, you just you, you tell me that it's not like I don't love him, I love him. Is it is it like? You see, neutrality is proof that you don't love. Are you understanding me now? Yes, sir. Are we still together? Are you understanding me? Because yes. whatever you love, you farms, you farms it. You are bored about it. You want to associate with it. Are you understanding me? So you see, whenever and wherever you find neutrality, it's because love is absent. Are we still together now? Praise God. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So human beings have the capacity to love and to stop loving. You see, but Jesus Christ has no such capacity. Oh, up to the point that Judas would betray him. He said, friend, betray down me with a kiss. He's still calling friend. It's not your kind of friend. It's not, it's not sarcastical. It's not sarcasm. Are you hearing me? Yes, it's not sarcasm. It shows the, the, the peak of his love for Judas. That friend... You see, I thought at that point, I thought Judas should come back to his senses. Yeah. Like when I read that scripture that year, like I could feel the love in the voice of Jesus. I'm telling you the truth. I could feel it literally. That year, I was in the university. I heard that voice. Friend, betray down me with a kiss. I could feel the passion in Jesus' voice. He meant that friend. He took Judas as a friend to that point. Are you understanding me? You see, but you, come on, your gun is big, it's much more. Ready? Ah, show you more. Love has disappeared. You see, the human mind is so fickle. And Jesus wants to save us from fickleness. He wants to save us from, what is this? Eh? Well green. Human beings are not stable. <laughs> Are you understanding me? But Jesus wants to bring us into an higher life. Uh, yes, sir. A life that has stability. Are you understanding me? And one of the stability that the believer must have is the stability of love. Are you hearing me? The stability of what? You should not love someone now. And then enter neutrality. Enter the you of the person again. Oh, can I talk to us so that I will help you? You see, you can, you can, you can, you can give allowance. You can give a gap, like Abraham and uh, Lot. You see, there was Abraham gave allowance. He gave a gap, but Lot still remained. How do I know? You see, Abraham, 
Abraham went to sacrifice his life to rescue Lot. Are you understanding me? So don't be foolish. When people hurt you, don't say, Pastor, I said we should love you. Keep loving. Don't keep giving them a woman in your life. Oh. They will kill you. Don't be foolish. So you can set boundaries. But love has to remain. Are you understanding me? Love has to what? Remain. You see, many times, access will not remain. Eh? Are you, are you learning wisdom? Access don't have to remain. Closeness don't have to remain. Are you understanding me? Are you hearing me now? Yes, you see, but love has to remain. Are you understanding me? So Abraham set a boundary with Lot, but love remained. So that when Lot needed help, Abraham did not mind risking his entire life, his entire army. Are you hearing me now? Are we sitting together? The Lord says he wants us to love in a particular way. As he has loved us. Are you understanding me? A love that has no boundary. A love that has no limit. A love that has no condition. The kind of love that Jesus is calling us to as a church. Are you hearing me now? Is the love that has no what? No condition. The love that has no expiry date. Are you hearing me? Our love was what? Have no expiry date. It was the real. It was the real. It was the sacrificial. I, don't let me, don't let me. I, I'm going to show you. You're going to see the elements of this kind of love. Amen. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. But the advice says what? By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If what? Now this is how people will know that you are my disciples. It's not by you when and go. You know that you wear every Sunday, so people wear this is women's good, they wear and go and all of that. Is that not a sign of love? Can we wear it? Yes. But I'm not the only thing that are not a sign of love. Or things that, that when people say, say, oh, these people are true Christians. So people now see people entering church now. Not all like five of you that are wearing the same clothes. <laughs> and I say, oh, these guys are true Christians. See how they are wearing the same clothes. Are you understanding me now? Are you hearing me? He says, the true proof of our Christianity is that we love what? One another. Are you understanding me? You see, any Christianity, are you understanding me? Any practice of Christianity that is void of this kind of love is false. Is what? False. Is false. You know what that says? By this shall all men know that you are my disciple. If you have not one to another, that means you are not my disciples if you don't love one another. So we have a lot of false Christians today, and, and a lot of false churches where there is no love. But good women will still wear the same clothes. Good women association will wear the same clothes. Good men they look for jeans, blue jeans, on Sunday. They go and play football together. You see, as they are playing football, eh, what person is and that is, is hoping that we have an injury that, that will make him not to be able to go to work again. It's open. <laughs> it's open. That go to your shibu. We will be ready. Go to your shibu. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? So we must be careful. Can we do all those things? Yes. But let's be careful of what we think as the way to identify true Christianity. <laughs> you know, Christ says the only proof of true Christianity is that we love one another. How? As He loves us. Are you understanding me? Yes, sir. So, we can tell through Christians. Huh? We can tell. Three churches. 
Are you understanding me? Who is a true Christian? A true Christian is the one who loves his brother. His Christian brother. What is a true church? A true church is that church where they love what? One another. You see, if we don't perfect this act of love, are you understanding me? We have opened our church to Satan. Are you understanding me? Because you see, love is the realm of God. Eight is the realm of Satan. You see, the Bible says that what? King, it tells you we should love our brothers and not be as king. Who was of that wicked one? Are you understanding me? So, King did not love why he was in the realm of Satan. There is no love in the realm of Satan. Are you hearing me? There is no what? No. Lord of King, give, give me the previous verse. For this is the meaning that you he heard from the he heard from the beginning that we should what love one another. Okay, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. You see, Cain was living in a realm. What name of that realm? The realm of the wicked one. So in that realm, there is no love. You see, and when there is no love, you can't do anything to your brother. So much so that you can kill your brother. Are you understanding me? Yes, Praise God forever more. So go back to that scripture. Shout hallelujah. Yes. So the proof of our Christianity is our love for what? For one another. Eh? Are you brothers and sisters? Is our love for what? If we don't love one another, we are joking. You see, you see, give me the give me of this scripture that we should close down our church if we don't love ourselves. Do you understand that any church where they don't love you does not deserve to be in existence. Now, what are you doing? They are not my disciples because the foundation of the church is love. Glory to God forevermore. Let me move fast. So, come and see how to identify, how, come and see the elements of this kind of love. It's a popular scripture. I'm going to very fast this morning. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Are we sitting together now? Glory to God. So, by this shall what? All men. Some men. How many men? So that means there's a litmus test. That if you choose any man randomly, <laughs> are you understanding me? That if you choose any man randomly from any country, if you choose a Brazilian, if you choose uh, a, a Croatian, if you choose anybody, are you understanding me? Someone who is educated, someone who is not educated, someone in the village, someone in the city, if you choose anybody, if a priest and all of that, he said all of them, he said, the only litmus test that is to identify true Christians and true churches, he said, is love. Can I, do you know the meaning of this? That means love can be seen and felt. Are you understanding? You see, people know how we love ourselves. They say, by this, all men know. That means they can see our love. They can feel our love. They can touch our love. Are you understanding me? You see, that means what is so obvious to the people, to all men. You see, you see, the use of all men, you're talking about unbelievers. Huh? The, the proof is what is so this what's so obvious to them. What makes sense to them, what ignites them is not the size of our church. It's not the cars we pack. Are you understanding me? What entices them, what catches their attention is what? Our love for one another. They can see it. Brothers and sisters, the world is watching. Is that why they take us on serious? <laughs> they take us on serious. Do you know the videos, you know the campaigns, they take you on serious. Why? Because there's, you guys have said there's an element by which they know that these sons are disciples of Jesus. He said, by love, love one another. Amen. Amen. Go to Volker here after 13. I'm trying to be so fast. From that one, you all know, you all know, you all know this, this scripture. Don't give us charity. Don't give charity. Charity is not in this church. She, she, she's at only Catholic. <laughs> Charity is not it's love. That is the English joy. Amen. 
Are you going charity? Charity. The charity come to church. I need the charity in this church. Many people are going to charity. Amen. Look at it now. Come and see this love of Jesus. And now come and tell whether you truly love your brothers or not. Whether this love is in our midst or not. You see, it's not a problem if it's not really in our midst. Are you understanding? Yet. But we have to see that this is the kind of love that we have been in our midst. So that we can pray for it. Pray for it and work at it. Can you say work at it? You see, can you say work at it? You see, we can work at it. Love, love no is you. Are you hearing me? Love one another is not worse. You thought it's easy? The kind of love that is easier is the one you have when you are still dating the guy. You see, after you marry the guy that is not really easy. <laughs> it's not that you are still on the road. Oh, babe, I miss you now. I miss you. When will I see you now? Oh, I can't wait for us to get married. Hey! I can't wait for us to get married. I can't wait. I really love you. You, see, you know that is very easy. That one is so easy. Hey! I love you. I miss you. When can we hang out? <laughs> you know I don't know why you have to hang out. <laughs> I know that you see, I can't wait to marry you. I know that by the time before you wake up, I'm ready to have you in oh, the past. <laughs> I can't wait. No, I don't know. But now I'm going to you that I'm a great cook. Before you wake up, you already found pasta beside the bed. It's plantain, it's chicken, you find coffee and all of that. With some ice cream and cocoa. <laughs> you see? And the guy can do it before they marry. <laughs> you see? The guy can order pizza. I don't understand. He can order pizza of maybe 5k and use Uber of 20k to deliver it. <laughs> To the girl. I hear that you see, the girl can cook, eh? The girl is staying in the back of the key. You see? <laughs> the girl is staying in Lagos. The girl can cook stew. And find a weekend to bring that soup. You know, I cook our traditional soup for you. <laughs> I'm cooking. You may enjoy me as your wife, though. You see, that kind of is shocking. It's shocking. You see? Because of that kind of love, eh? One day my wife, before my she fell inside gutter. She, she, was, she was chatting me. Wait now. That time, eh? The biggest chance person was, was to go. How many of you know to go? So we we can call it we can call it to go leg. I don't know if that mark is there. I'll check it later. We can call it to go leg. She fell, is scratch. I, I don't know that the talk has stopped suddenly. I don't say she fell inside gutter. To go to go leg. <laughs> you see now she gets to work. She does not remember to call me. <laughs> I don't know if she still loves me. <laughs> she goes to work from morning to evening. I don't hear her voice. But she comes back. <laughs> Some of you manage to call me a dear man to work. Me, I say, okay, okay, God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> Just say, my life, dear, for me to make you dear to work. <laughs> you see, the love that is easy, eh? Is that one? That butterfly one? That bubble, the girl, the girl, you propose, go down with your leg. Why are you doing that for this girl? <laughs> tell me, eh? Tell me, tell me, what are you doing that for? <laughs> You know why? Because there's no real responsibility yet. Uh, there's no real responsibility yet. You have not yet addressed each other's weaknesses. You, are, you, are not, you, are not, you see, what she saw before they married her, she didn't, even, even though she was seeing some weaknesses, it's like, it's like this guy. <laughs> you see, that love, there's a love that is blind. <laughs> you see, that love will think that, don't worry, just, I can manage it. <laughs> That is just, no, when you marry, I will work on him. 
<laughs> I don't understand it. You see, can I talk to you? Let me please say this in person. You see, when you are dating, eh, don't close your eyes. Oh. What you can't live with in marriage, eh, if you start seeing it in dating, please, it's better you back out. Because if you think you will change the way you marry, it's not true, it will multiply. Are you understanding me? It will multiply. So it's better you, both of you agree to work on it now. <laughs> eh? I don't think that it has been worked on. No, that doesn't like to take lifelong working though. <laughs> you know, from the, the, the one, that's what my is. Yeah. Something to take lifelong work. Do you know that some people keep working on it? That one, you can marry. <laughs> Are you understanding me? Praise God. So can I tell you that, that you cannot afford to take lifelong? Because it will kill you. Anger issues. Anger issues. Anger. You see, the man can get angry one day and break your head. And they can get angry and poison you. No man, they don't say anger is a work on it. Anger is ang like real anger. Hey! Don't, don't work on it in marriage, you. Break from it now. Are you understanding me? Anger is dishonor, disrespect, disvalue, all this kind of stuff. Are you understanding me? Selfishness. I'm not lying to you. Selfishness. Hey! Selfishness. A woman that is selfish is a danger to her husband. A man that is selfish is a danger to his wife. Selfishness. Are you hearing me? There are many things you cannot manage inside marriage. It will increase. Don't try and say you work on it. We'll keep working on it. Are you understanding me now? Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. But again, I don't need not to dress well. The cooking is, the girl's cooking is still. It's three decades of rice and five decades of salt. Oh. <laughs> 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 Amen. 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 The guy, the guy is not really good at at calling, at testing. But you know, he's not really good at it. He's not. Maybe his, his personality, the way he grew up. See, those kind of things can be working on it. Small, small. He can't like being alone. Doesn't. Those are not. You understand? Introvert. You know, he likes his place. Are you understanding me? Are you hearing me? You can start working on it before you get married, and you keep working on it inside marriage. Are you understanding? Because me now, I'm still working on it. Because me, I like being alone. <laughs> they are still working on it. No, she knew that I like being alone. But there are things we can work on. So I'm still working on it to be with the children. <laughs> it's a real work for me. Because that's not my personality. If you look at the one enjoying me down, you think the pastor likes me. I, I like being alone. She's the one that sees it majorly. But I appreciate pastor's wife. You see, you have to love your pastor's wife. And honor them. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Did you pastor have so much time, so much that you put your hands and all that? You see, sometimes he doesn't, he doesn't even feel like talking to his wife. He wants to be alone. Sometimes like his personality, sometimes like his office. Do you understand? Praise God for that one. The only point here, there are some things you can manage. Are we together now? Praise Jesus for that one. What brought me here, sir? No. <laughs> Love. Ah, how did I enter your with you, love? Ah, hey, hey, yeah, thank you, I remember. So, this love we're talking about, eh, is not the butterfly kind of love that has not gone through testing. Are you understanding me? Are you hearing me? Praise God forevermore. Yes, I, I know what I was saying now. Thank you, Lord. Are you understanding me? I think it takes work. We can work at loving ourselves. Are you understanding me? The work, the love they had before they married, they didn't really need to work. You see, now eh, they are not just the one year, they are working to love themselves. They have to work. If the love will continue, they have to work. Hey, you see, if we don't work, the love in our midst will die. You have to work. Oh, you didn't make one day, you know what? Are you understanding me? He said, when, but when a commitment came, you now have to work to keep the love and to renew the love. 
Are you hearing me? What's the point here? You see, it takes hard work to love ourselves. Are you understanding? Oh, you think our love is automatic, particularly now? Forget those how many years ago, those 12 years ago. And you come for how many hours? You see, if you're talking to me for one hour, two hours, I'm tired. I don't like I'm calling on the beginning and the call, like, think of what you will say. <laughs> I have to, I have to return, I have to do better. <laughs> now, I want to have a good version of so my mind. Uh, every day, uh, with a lie. In my mind. I my wife still is going to say now, like, be fast. <laughs> Even if I'm not doing anything. Because <laughs> really, I don't sound, the way sound is so stressful to when people are talking or talking or suddenly plays a WhatsApp video that sound, it always sound. Sound that is not me that orchestrated. Even me, when I'm doing it with status. Then there's a video, I'm going to take it away. Come on, son, it's not the way it goes to me. <laughs> I don't go to help me. <laughs> Amen. Let's go forevermore. So you see, it takes hard work to love. The real love takes hard work. Because it takes commitment. So if we're going to love ourselves as a church, as Christ loved us, we are really going to work hard at it. We are going to what? You see, real love is intentional. Are you understanding me? Real love is what? Real love, can you hear brothers and sisters? This real love, eh? That's what they tell you not about. This is what is also happening in your marriage. Are you understanding me? Are you hearing me? This real love, eh? Praise God. It has to be a decision. It has to be what? It has to be a decision. So, we have to make the decision to love ourselves. Do you know, that, do you know why it has to be a decision? Because sometimes you see something in somebody that will, that will make you not want to love the person. That will make you to want to cut off. That will make you to want to, want to, want to want. just be on your own. Name. Maybe, you know, I don't want to have anything to do with you. You see, we have to make the decision. You see, in a church, are you hearing me? Love is a must. Are you hearing me? In a choice, what is what? It's not a choice, so. It's not a choice, so. You see, can I tell you how churches are arranged? Ah? Uh, in a church, you might not necessarily be close to everybody. Yeah, you don't make it. You don't think you have to be close to everybody. So I say, look now. This, this is our number, says, are you being close to everybody? I'm to talk, I'm to talk about going to in our thousands. In a church, you might not necessarily be close to everybody. But in a church, you have to love everybody. Are you hearing me? Are you understanding me now? Praise God. Shout hallelujah. You have a brother, or you have a sister, you have a brother. Praise God. You can say my brother is also my friend, yes. But your brother is your brother. Yes. And you have friends. Is your friend your brother? Your friend is your friend. You have a friend that you really like that. This is my friend. And you have a brother that you really love. And this is my brother. But your brother is not your friend. Don't say, I'm not saying friendly. Your brother is not your friend. You love him so much. He's your brother. But he's not your friend. I'm not, you know what I'm trying to say to you? Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm talking about your body, can't brother. You understand? Your brother is your brother. He doesn't really have to be your friend. But you love him. In fact, some like I even love him more than your friend. But he's not your friend. Are you understanding me? You can sacrifice for him more than your friend, but he's not your friend. You can go all the way for him more than your friend, but he's not your friend. But you also have another, you have a friend that you also love so much. So you have a friend and you have a brother. You love your friend and you love your brother. Are you understanding me? So you can love your brother without him being your friend. Oh. Are you understanding me? I don't want to say to you. Yes, sir. You can love without that in what? Being your friend. You can sacrifice your brother without him being your friend. And the church is telling you we are what? We are brothers and sisters. The Bible doesn't say we are friends. The Bible call us friends. No. Why do you call us? Brothers and sisters. Are you understanding me? That is why love is compulsory. I'm not going to show you wisdom. Why you don't think that love means everybody has to be close to you? Huh? Love does not mean everybody has to be your friend in church. Are you understanding me? 
but you have to love everybody in church. Are you understanding now? So that if one is not close to you, it doesn't mean that oh, this brother is not close to me. Ah, maybe he hates me. No, no, it doesn't mean. So it doesn't mean maybe the person is not getting close to you and getting close to this particular person. There's not a natural way, you see, but your brother can again be your friend. Are you understanding me? So I'm not simply in church, you might just ask someone that you are, you love everybody, you will sacrifice for everybody, but you have someone that you just drawn to as a friend. Do you understand? So in that, you see, as brothers and sisters in church, we all have to be close at the part, to a very good level, where we love and sacrifice for one another. You see, but there's another kind of friendship. Are you understanding me? That is the only one the kind of friendship. Oh, my friend! You understand the kind of? You don't have it to everybody in church. Are you understanding me? Yes, sir. So, the Lord is not with you in church. Because he doesn't have anything against you. Are you understanding me? Yes, sir. And doesn't mean you have anything against anybody. Are you understanding me? So, in the church, love has to be constant. Love has to be what? Constant. We have to love one another. It's a, it's a must. Love is a must in the church of Christ. Yes, it is not under the church of Christ if there is no love. It has turned to a false church. <laughs> are you with me now? Yes, are we sitting with our brothers and sisters? Yes, are you sure you are, you are with me? Yes, you are thinking about the rice. You are thinking about the rice. Ah, uh, express that there was in my heart. Yes, she's thinking about the rice. Also, I just make sure there is no rice after service. <laughs> Amen. Praise God forevermore. If I could speak with the language of earth and of angels, look at it now. If I could speak with all the language of earth and of angels, if I could speak with tongues, but didn't love others, he's talking about the Christian context, the local assembly. I will only be what? A noisy gang or a clanny simba. They were a noise maker. I have one teaching, I don't know, but I still wrote down. Noise makers. See, there are many noise makers in church. Oh, is that you are a noise maker? Yaka kaka pie kaka shokoto shaka bia la bia la toy. This guy's talk is very deep. You see, God calls Michael. Is that Michael? Please go and say who is who is making noise there. Ah oh, yes, show us in KJV. Noisy gang, noisy gang. You are making a noise. You are disturbing us. You are disturbing heaven. Can you let me see what the people will be Ah ah. Amen. Oh, is it is even I said I should not look for that noisy. That noise is what I'm looking for. If I could speak on language of it and avenger, this is tongues. But they didn't love others. They didn't love my brothers and my sisters. I will only be a noisy gong or a clangy zebra. You know many of us place premium on tongues. And we don't place premium on love. Think if you can speak in tongues for 10 hours, it's okay. Well, there are many of us keep my spirit alive. All right, how many hours have you spoken in tongues today? 10 hours. You see, boy, she has never loved before. So each time she comes to pray, ah, Michael is there, ah, oh, you are not speaking at the door. So you know, you say, Shakobo, Yakaya, come the Kela Koso, Yakaya. <laughs> you see, they are closing their windows in heaven. God, the, noise, the noise is disturbing them. Now, the noise makers, noise makers. The noise is disturbing them. They say you are making a noise. Praise God. You see, and they will soon call police to arrest you because you see, you have, America, America can be better than heaven. In America, they are making noise too much. Your neighbor can call the police. <laughs> ah, you don't know. All the correct countries. If you hear one person from his room, I can be hearing a speaker in my own house. And I'm not going to sleep. You can no, 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 you know, they say, you don't preach on the road as you are preaching it. There are places that are around the way you can go and do your public preaching. But you don't preach on any street. 
I said, okay, I will not have If they catch you, so they are very arranged. No noise. You see, they can't be as arranged as heaven. Are you understanding me? You see, so when they are here, you can catch a bakua, kate, hop, 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 cha, 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 cha. And there is no meal there. You are disturbing them. They are telling, you see, they are looking for people to come and arrest you. <laughs> and why are you stressing us? Why are you stressing? Why are you? Uh -huh, thank you, Amplify. If I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love for her that's going out of God for me, then I will become only a noisy gong or a clanging zither. Just an annoying distraction. So you hear me? Just what? An annoying. an annoying distraction. Annoying distraction. Annoying. You see, you annoy everyone with your voice to a prayer when you don't work in love. They are annoyed. They are annoyed. Like, why are you banging our gates? Go and love your brother. So as you are saying, ka, 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 shock, ka, tell him. He says, go and love your brother. Oh yeah, they begin to wipe you. Go and love your brother. Go. Go, go, go. Get up. Go and love your brother. Your, your prayer does not, it doesn't count. So be careful of false spirituality. Can you say false spirituality? False spirituality. So there's a false spirituality eh, that we want to use to cover up our lack of love. Are you understanding me? Are you hearing me? So there's a lack of love that will not put on a false spirituality. We have seen lack of love. Are you understanding me? We let's come and pray together for seven hours. The brother you are praying together with for seven hours does not have food. He's hungry. You have food, but you can't share your food. But you want to pray and talk for seven hours together. False spirituality. Are you understanding me? So, false spirituality cannot be an exchange for love. Are you understanding me? Let me open the way in the world on the screen. Go back to NLT. Amen. Speaking in tongues cannot be a nation for what? For walking in love. Are you understanding me? You see, if we have to choose one, we just speaking in tongues or what? Walking. Or walking in love. You better choose walking in love. I'm telling you the truth though. You better choose to walk in love. Better than to think of it that God, please don't let me know how to speak in tongues again. Let me know how to love. I don't want to know how to speak in tongues again in my life. Are you understanding? Because some of us cherish something that we think make us spiritual. Hey, hey, are you hearing what I'm talking to you about? You see, how they measure spirituality is our love for one another. How they measure it in heaven. Are you understanding me? Let's run verse 2. If I have the gift of prophecy, and if I have the love of secret plans, and possess all knowledge, and if I, if I, if I have such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. Are you understanding me? I don't want to break down because time will, time will not permit us. I will be what? I would be nothing. Are you hearing now? Praise God. I will be what? I will be nothing. Are you understanding? That means, you know the name of this? That you are useless, to, you are nothing. The one who says, Noisy, you are making noise, you are an annoying distraction. This one says you would be nothing. That they don't they can't see you. Like if you like do all of these things, prophesy, have so much faith to raise the dead to move mountains, but you don't love your brother and sister, it says you are not they can't see you. You don't count as anything. Like you don't exist, that's the meaning. Like you don't exist in the realms of God. Because the realms of God is the realms of love. Now, although you can do all of these things, but you are not walking in love, they think they can't see you. You don't exist. Are you understanding me? So it's possible to be alive and be non existent. Are you understanding me? So a believer who does all of this stuff but doesn't work in the Bible says it does not exist. You don't exist before God. Don't let them deceive you. You are nothing. Let's, let's run, let's run. There's a place I want to land in the particular scriptures in Acts. I'll be done. See, so, if I gave everything I have to the poor, <laughs> hey, and even sacrifice my body, I don't, I don't have time to explain all of these things. Because there's some way I'm going. 
I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. You know what I mean of this? Love is not philanthropy. It's not philanthropy. If I give anything I have to the poor. Eh? That's philanthropy, right? He said that's not love. Are you understanding me? He said love is not philanthropy. And even if I can tell you about this is, uh, this is activism. You're an activist. You are saying so, uh, you don't mind going to prison just uh, for the for the emancipation of the people. <laughs> this, is, this is activism. Are you understanding me? So philanthropy and activism is not necessarily love. So anytime you see an activist, it doesn't necessarily mean he loves the people. Eh? He has a cause in his own mind. There's something he wants. Some of you take activism as love for people. They are lying. So when you see activists online, they say yes. These are, these are people speaking for the people. Even our fathers, the Jews, are not even talking. They don't love the people. They don't love Nigerians. See the here, you know that the one speaking. They truly love us. All the Jews is just to collect money, to collect money, to collect, to collect money. They are not talking. They are not saying anything. Hey, you don't know love. Activism is not love. Hey, let's see what love is. Love is patient and kind. <laughs> love is what? Like, I mean, I, you see, I'm not going to explain the play. I have the play I'm going to ask about because I want to close. Now, begin to ask yourself as you read these things that love is. Do I, do I love? Am I walking in love? Love is patient and kind. Are you patient? Are you patient? Are you patient with your brothers and your sisters? Are you patient with the church? Are you patient with the people? Are you patient? Are you kind? You even need to go and sit down and look at these words one after the other and do a study on what they are. Now, what does it mean to be patient? What does it mean to be kind? You need to go and study it. Love is patient and kind. Are you understanding me? So, if we as a church, if we are going to love one another, we have to be patient and kind to one another. Are you understanding me? We have to be patient with one another and kind to one another. Love is not jealous or proud or boastful. Love is not what jealous or boastful or proud. Some of you know how jealous is here. Can, can I tell you jealousy? Eh? Jealousy is not just when you are not happy about all this stuff. Eh? Can I tell you another expression of jealousy? Jealousy is you wish is you wishing that it's you that that thing happened to. <laughs> can you explain? So you got a job of $10,000. Eh? I got to know about it. See, jealousy is not me being unhappy. Eh? Jealousy is not, is not, is not, is not just me being unhappy. It's not just me being angry. Are you understanding? Are you hearing me? Jealousy is not just me being, not putting up attitude. You see? Jealousy is also me wishing that it's me that got that job. Yes. That's jealousy. Are you understanding me? I'm not going to show you the subtle experience of jealousy that people don't know. I might not know. When something good is happening to your brothers and sisters, and you are wishing it's you, it's happening to you. are jealous. It's jealousy. Even though you are happy that, oh, top man, it's just with you. Thank God, though. Thank God, though. You see, some people are so jealous that you see. They enjoy so much. I think they are rejoicing. They say, ah, top man, I wish it's me that got that job. So I say it. So I say it. I don't know if like that. So I like that. But then they'll be laughing. I mean, their heart is not. This is, this is really jealous, you. This is just one that their heart is bad towards you. That they begin to show you attitude. They are the best jealousy. Because I think mean, you know that they're jealous about you. You can be careful with them. You can be careful now. <laughs> Do you understand? Do you understand? You cannot let them put them. Are you hearing me? Are you understanding me? You see, any kind of jealousy is bad. But it's, it's better to be jealous openly. That I'm angry with him, I'm beefing him. You know, that people will beef you because you're showing you. Because when you have to eat that people will beef you. Are you understanding me? Yes, sir. If you don't care, kind of jealousy is better. Are you understanding me? What about the jealousy where they say, oh, my friend, don't play. I'm just, 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 I'm
Ah, come on, you are getting married. To that same girl. Ah, but uh, you are lucky. I wish I'm the one that is marrying that girl. <laughs> you see, that is. Are you hearing me? That is jealousy speaking. You see, and if that fruit is not killed, eh, it can grow into a a a a dragon that murders. Who is that? Praise God forevermore. Please always make sure you put your phone on silence whenever you are coming to church. Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. You see, any occasion of jealousy that is not curtailed can grow into a murdering spirit. A spirit that murders, that kills. You see? So any occasion of jealousy you find yourself, you have to quickly kill it in the of prayer and deliberately. If the part of how to kill jealousy is to publicly celebrate people. Let them know you celebrate and appreciate them. Buy gifts for them. So I like, oh, it's over $1,000. You see, I have feeling that it's like you are getting envious or jealous. You see that you are just buying a job of 100k. Be sending data to him. Data of 1 gig every month. Because you see, when you give, you are trying to cultivate a culture of love. Because one of the things of love is to give. Are you understanding me? You see, people you continue to give to and pray for, you will hardly not love them. Jealousy will be breaking off. I'm telling you how to, how to deal with jealousy. Are you understanding me? Maybe one of the jealousy is, I think they have more likes, to, more likes, more followers, and all of that on his post and all that. You see, one of the jealousy is to share their post. Go to their post, share it, like it, comment. If you do it, if you keep doing it, that demon inside your jealousy will be dying. It will die. Because it, it will find out that you, you will not send them. I don't send you. Is it, so a lot of, all of us identify this thing, whether it's in us or not. You know. You know. I'm sure you have to deal with it. I'm sure you have to deal with it. Deal with it too. Jeremy yeah, can result in murder. You can kill somebody. Are you understanding me? Love is not jealous or boastful or proud, okay? Or rude. You see, many of you know that you are rude. <laughs> are you understanding me? You don't need power, you are not rude. Some of you agree with a pastor. <laughs> are you understanding me? He yeah, is not rude to any to your brothers. Love is not rude. So, then you begin to see the ingredients of love. We have to love ourselves. He does not demand its own way. Eh? It is not irritable. Any small thing you are Any small thing you are irritated. Don't, don't, don't talk to me like that. How do you talk to me like that? You are irritated. You are easily, you are irritable. It's not, it's not easily there. It is not irritable. You are easily irritated by people. People easily offend you. Is a proof that there's no love. When there's love, love is not irritable. Are you understanding me? Love is not what? Irritable. Don't be easily offended. Don't. When there's love, you can't be easily offended. It's not irritable. That, that this girl is even pissing me off. This girl is pissing, she's just pissing me off. You feel resentment. Are you understanding me? And it keeps no record of being wrong. Hey! You see, you see, you remember how your cousin brother offended you five years ago? You remember? You can, you can write it down word for word. <laughs> you are counting it. So that you see, when you offend me again today, you say, Dad, you see, you say, this is the 20th time you are doing this thing. <laughs> Some of you know the number of times somebody has done to you. Like, talk to that's how you keep up with that. This is your seventh time of doing this thing. This is your seventh time. There's no love. You keep the record of girl. Empress is touching you in that place. That one is touching you. You know how many times you have offended you. <laughs> this is your seventh time of doing this thing. You see, if there's love, it keeps the record. You see, we all have to work on these things. You know that love is hard work. I still have a fault here, even I'm announced the seven times. So like this is what you, you did it last week. <laughs> I, 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 I have I have a complaint. 
I ask people, what are you, ah, uh, we are going. It's the same disease I say all of us. It's the same doctor we need. It's the same hospital. It's the same word of God. It's the same medication. Are you understanding? I forgive you, like, you, 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 keep, you keep apologizing. He said, you did, that's how you did last week. That's how you still did. You might not say it seven times. He said, that's how you, it's when you are talking like that, love has never been perfected. Don't make reference to offenses. Because love keeps no record of being wronged. <laughs> are you understanding me? When an issue has been sorted, it has been sorted. You see, if anything does that thing again, the meaning of this love is that, even if I don't know five hundred times before, the meaning of this work is wrong is that when a person does it again, that is the first time person is doing it. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? That is the first time the person is what? You have to take it as what? That is the first time. Then you are remembering that you have done it before. When you say you have done it before, that is that you did yesterday. That you did last week. That you did. Love has never been perfected. Are you understanding me now? Let's keep reading. It is not just a bandit, but it is whenever the truth means that, okay? Love never gives up, never loses faith. It's always open and goes through every circumstance. Amen. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge become useless. But love will last forever. Amen. Let me summarize. Go to Corinthians. Let me summarize within 15 minutes. I'll be done. I'll summarize. I don't want to take your time. I want you to. To go and feast. Are you are you suffering now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can enjoy. Go to, for, go to Acts chapter one. You see, this love eh, is how we grow our church. Are you hearing me? How are we grow our church? Love is how the church will grow. Are you understanding me? You see, a church in which there's no love cannot have the God kind of growth. Are you understanding me? You see, God has no plans to grow a church in which there's no love. The church can grow itself. <laughs> eh? But it's not God's good. And it's not God's good, it's not God's church, it's not God's house. Are you hearing me? Are you understanding me? If a church, if as a church, they are going to experience the God's kind of growth, are you understanding me? The foundation of it is what? Is love. It's loving one another. Give me Acts, read from, read from Acts chapter 1, from verse 12. I want to be very fast. Brothers and sisters, how are we going to grow our church? I can't hear you. How are we going to grow our church? By loving one another. By loving one another. By loving one another. If we want to have the kind of good that God has planned for us, the only way is to love one another. And when I'm even saying that I'm not talking in America, are you understanding me? I'm not just saying spiritual. I'm not just talking what numerical. I want to fill this place up. Then move to another place and fill it up and build a very big area and keep filling it up. I keep adding extensions to the flow. It's our love. Are we still together now? Look fast at Acts chapter one from verse twelve. Acts chapter one from verse twelve. So this was after Jesus Christ at resurrected and had gone back to heaven are you hearing me don't forget i said what don't what okay. what did i say don't forget. jesus christ i told them that a new commandment i give what i give you that you should what love one another how so those guys have been practicing something you know in what you have what left what are they been practicing? I can't hear you. Love. Before you guys died, they have been practicing what? Love. I can't hear you. Love. They have been practicing love. I want to show you how love grows the church. Are we still together now? So they have been learning, they have been working hard to love themselves. They have been working and they have been practicing love. So now at this point, Jesus Christ was ascending to so or, or had ascended. So let's read. Read from read NLT. Read NLT. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, a distance of half a mile. When they arrived, 
they went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying. Here are the names of those who were present Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Aphios, Simon, the Lord, and Judas, son of James. Okay, give me verse 14. They all met together and because of the went in prayer, along with the mother of Jesus, several other women, and brothers of Jesus. Okay, verse 15. Look at this here. During this time, when about 120 believers were together in one place, Peter stood up and addressed them. There's something I want to show us here. During this time, when what? When about 120 what? believers. How many were there? Eh? Like in the whole world. And this was the only church then. You don't understand? This was the only what? How many were there? <laughs> Are you understanding? Like in the whole world. The church has started. Eh? And they had 120 members. 120 members is a fraction of of the world. Of how many? What fraction is it of the whole world? Are you hearing me? Are you understanding me? What fraction was it of the whole world? Bear in mind it. What fraction of it was the, of what fraction of Jerusalem was it? Yes. Still very small. So this was a very young church, a new church, a young church, and it was still small in number. Oh, are you hearing me? Don't look at how 20 as we go. Look at the context, look at the situation, look at the context though. You know now, you know now we have many churches. So if you have one church, you feel like you have members. But there are many, because there are many. That is the only church. Are you understanding me? Yes, sir. Imagine I'm that now that there's only one church. And church now has 1,200 members. Now there's a mega church. <laughs> In the whole world, only one church, 1,200 members. Now call it a mega church. Now you have crowd, you say you have people. No, you don't. This was a very small church. If I can use that one. You don't know what I mean by a very small church. In terms of number. You don't understand the situation. You see, this was a new church, a very small church in number, and a church that their master just went. Are you understanding me? Their pastor, their leader, the founder of the church. Are you understanding me now? He had died. They saw him when he died. They were all scattered. He came back. Now he has gone again. He has left them. Hey, do you know what they were going through here? They were left in a lonely world. Are you understanding me? He was their cousin, he was their sukkah when I had left them. So he left them in a lonely way. He left them lonely. Are you understanding me now? The Jewish people, the Roman, everybody was against them. Are you understanding me? Like the whole world was against these guys. Are you hearing me? They were 120. The number was so small. Are you understanding me now? But they've been doing something. They've been doing what? They've been walking in love. Are you understanding me? You see, when we walk in love as a, as a church, soon and very soon, we will bet something that will turn our world upside down. Mm. Yes, sir. So, are you understanding me now? When we walk in love as a church, we gain our number. Are you understanding me? Soon and very soon, what? We will bet on we will bet on our what? That will turn our world upside down. Oh, they said to them in, in that chapter 4. It said, The men that turn the world upside down have come here again. Can you find it for me? In this same act. It says, The men that turn the world upside down have come here again. <laughs> okay. Aha, uh -huh, chapter 17. And when they found them not, they drew, they drew Jason and started going down to the middle of the city, crying. This that have turned the world upside down are coming down also. Are you understanding me? From 120. Go back to that place. So, this church walked, they kept walking in love, there is a number. If that is the opposition they were facing, that it got to a point they could attract something from heaven that will turn their world upside down. But I'm telling us, you see, we can turn this city upside down. Yes, sir. Glory Center 
community church. I said we can turn the city upside down. Yes, I can't hear you. I said we can turn the city upside down. Yes, and we are going to turn the city upside down. Yes, sir. How? They are going to love one another. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. They are going to do what? We are going to love one another. You see, when we perfect the heart of loving one another, we are going to turn our world upside down. So they were one twenty here, right? Now go to chapter two, verse one. But don't forget, these one twenty guys. Are you hearing me? These one hundred twenty guys, one hundred twenty believers, were walking in love. They had learned how to walk in love. They were they were practicing walking in love. So look at chapter two, verse one. On the day of Pentecost, now give me KJV now. I'm trying to rush, so there are some things I will not say. I will emphasize. And when the Pentecost was fully complete, they were all with one accord in one place. They were all what? We move with one accord and we. They were all in what? Does it read well? Does it make sense? Yes, it makes that they were all in one place. You see, but the emphasis is not one place. It's not where they were. It's how they were where they were. Are you understanding me? You see, <laughs> are you understanding me? You see, the beauty and power of the church is not where we are. It is not our building. It's not our structure. Are you understanding me? It's our internal arrangement. It's our unity. They were all going to in one place. You see, so where we are as a church physically is not as important. Are you understanding me? As how we are. Are we hearing me now? Are we still together? Yes, Where we are is not what? It's not as important as what? As how we are. But we are all going to Is it that one accord there? Eh? It's to be of one mind. It's to be of one purpose. Are you understanding me now? If you take the Greek, it's to be what? Of one mind, it will be of one purpose. You know what I'm going to say to you? You see? So, when we are of one mind, where we are wouldn't matter. Oh, you're not hearing me. Are you understanding me? Yes, when we are what? Of one mind. When we are of one mind, where we are wouldn't what? Because from where we are, we can shake the world. Yes, are you still hearing me? Yes, are you understanding me? When we have one mind, where we are wouldn't matter because right from where we are, we are going to shape the world. Are you understanding me? You see, because what shapes the world about the church is not where they are. Are you understanding me? It is it is their love, it is when they are of one purpose, one mind. And let me talk to you. What brings us to this place of being of one mind, being in one accord? It is love. That's where I'm going to. Are you understanding me? You see, when there's real love, we will come to the place of being of one mind. When there's love. Without love, we cannot come, we can never come to one accord. Are you understanding me now? Love, genuine love for one another is what brings us to the place of what? Of one mind. When we are thinking the same thing. When there's real love. You know what causes division means because there's no love. So the way things that this is the way choir should go, this is the way choir should arrange. Are you understanding me? This is the way choir, this doesn't where choirs go. When they are some choir leader, things that, because there's no new law. No, 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 we can't let go this way. Because the person also wants to have his own way. You remember Corinthians? Does not demand his own way. That is love. So, because there is no person wants to demand his own way, that I'm also a, a guy here. You know, there are just where two of guys are fighting that, no, our own way is on ways, they are one way. They are fighting. They want to have their way. You know what I'm going to say to you? Are you understanding me now? So, because there is no love, there is no unity. They are not of one mind. You see, any church where there is no unity is always slow. They are slow. Their progress is slow. They are slow. They are not of one mind. You see, imagine we, we wanted to do love feast. Are you understanding me? Imagine we, we, have, we have a meeting. Imagine we, in that meeting we spent hours. How is it not? It's not a long day. How is it not a long day? 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 No, no, no. I understand it. I am not able to agree. Are you hearing me? Someone says no, someone says no, someone says no, someone says no, concussion, someone says no, beans and plantain, someone says no, people will enjoy it, someone says no, are you understanding me? 
struggling, fights. There is no emotion. A lot of times, things happen because there is no love. Nobody wants to con con condescend to the other party. Are you understanding me? So these guys at work in love, they had practiced love. Eh? They had they had worked out a loving themselves that they had each something in school called one accord. Are you understanding me? You see, one accord does not just come on. One accord comes when we work hard at loving ourselves. Are you understanding me? You see, what happens as we keep working hard at loving ourselves is that what we eat something in the spirit called one mind, one accord, one mind, one purpose. Not nobody seeking anything for himself. Are you understanding me now? So I, I brought you, I took you through John and yet to see what brought this place. What brought one mind is that they had worked hard at loving themselves. You see, brothers and sisters, if we don't work hard at loving ourselves, we are never going to come to one accord. Yeah. But doesn't we have our own opinion? Does it? You, you know, we all have different opinions. But that's where love comes in. Like, okay, let us do it this way. And we'll agree. And nobody feels any help. Nobody tries to scatter it at the back. Nobody, nobody tries to pull out because they didn't accept our opinion. <laughs> Are you hearing me? So love will always culminate in oneness of mind. And this is so serious. Are you hearing me? You see, and when we come to one mind, are you understanding me? Everything can break out on us. Verse 2. Verse 2. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Are you understanding me? That means something from heaven can eat us. Are you understanding me? When we come to that place of one accord. The Bible says, and suddenly, you see, it will happen suddenly. But you see, there was something that there was something that invited it. What invited it? The oneness of mind, the oneness of purpose. But you see, that oneness of mind also was given birth to by a long, a, a contracted love work. Are you understanding me? They've worked in love for long, but they've now eat a point that is called oneness of mind. That is called one accord. You see, and when we eat one accord in the spirit, Anything can happen to us suddenly. Are you understanding me? We can grow, are you understanding me? To 1,000 in a day. Billionaires can arise amongst us in a day. Anything can happen suddenly in the church where there's love. Suddenly, they can come from heaven. You see, we can receive something from heaven that will turn our world around. You're in Central Community, are you listening to me? Yes, I said we can receive something from heaven that will turn our world around. We can receive something from heaven that will turn our city around. We can receive something from heaven that will turn our community around. Ah, yes, when we walk in love. Because walking in love will produce one of mind. Yes. Are you understanding me now? Yes, no time. Let me let me let me try and close. Praise God for everyone. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So we have to walk in love so that we can arrive at one accord. And when we arrive at one accord, we can invite everyone to come. And when everyone comes, anything is possible. Yes, sir. I said anything is possible. Yes, sir. You see, with a church, are you understanding me, that is walking in one purpose as a result of a contracted love work, Anything is possible. It doesn't matter that they are 120. I said anything is possible. <laughs> you see, part of what is possible is that what? Don't go there. 3,000 can be added in a day. Yes, uh -huh. You see, we are, to, we are going to grow our church by walking along. It's the foundation of church growth. Are you understanding me? Because our, our love work, our contracted love work, will give birth to oneness of mind. Are you understanding me? And oneness of mind will invite heaven to come. And when heaven comes, when heaven breaks out, anything is possible. Now run to chapter 10, run to verse 36. Run to verse 36. 
As I began to round the round the verse 36. Therefore, so many people were there, they were at uh, this were drunk, Peter Lamb began to preach and all that. So look at it. Then when I come out of this one, I show you that God has made that same Jesus, whom you are priest, by the Lord and Christ. Oh, you know, yeah. Now, when they heard this, they were put in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? You see, love, when we love one another, men are convicted. Are you understanding? You see, our gospel has no power because it is devoid of love. We don't love ourselves. Are you hearing me? Don't forget what led to one accord. It is a contracted love walk. Eh? It is a what? Contracted love walk that led to one accord. The one accord led to the outbreak of, of, of heaven upon them. So, conviction will begin to eat our city, begin to eat our community when they see our love. Oh, what is it? Like? By this word, all men know that you are when you what? When you love one another. Are you understanding me? So, men are convicted. They want to come to our Jesus. Men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do to be saved? We want, we want this your gospel. We want this your Jesus. We want to be like him. You see? What, why should people... Let me ask you a question. Why should people get saved? What about you? What about you is interesting? What about you do you think is appealing? What to make people get saved? Why should you come to your church? Why should people come to... Tell me why should people come to your church? Are you understanding me? Like why? Why should they come? You have to be able to answer that question. Why should they believe you? Why should they believe that you're a Christian? Why should they agree with you? Why should they agree? Why should they listen to you? Why should they come to your church? You have to say, only your love, your love work. And we have seen that love is not this way, it's not, we've seen, what, and we've seen what love is. Are you understanding me now? So keep reading. Give me time to then repent and be baptized one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Go to verse 40. Verse 40. Verse 40. Verse 40. Verse 40. Go to verse 41. Come and see this now. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. Please look at this. And the same day they were added unto them. How many? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Oh, how would you classify this kind of growth? Is it in is it your um, geometric exponential? Is it geometric exponential? This is an exponential, this is an, this is an exponential growth. Are you understanding me? This is, this is not 100, this is not 100%. Are you understanding me? Praise God. This is an exponential growth. How many days did it take them to go to this level? One day. That is that a church can grow in a day. <laughs> Are you hearing me? You see, we have not practiced love, no. I'm telling you the truth. When we want to love, everyone will break out on us. And when everyone breaks out on us, anything is possible. Even physical growth. 3,000 of them are dead in the day. You see, we will grow our church through love. We can grow it through love. We have to really love ourselves. Three thousand people like how oh, how do you do the math? If you hear me, they were added to the church. Are you on that they were added unto them? Let me explain all these things to you. They were not first timers that came. And now feel the fun. We like to join your church. <laughs> are you understanding me? But we don't see them again. Are you understanding? Like you don't came and they stayed. They they stayed we went for three months, they now enter for cultural class. They did culture class, they became workers, they kept growing, they kept listening to I know that they kept growing in the church. That's the meaning of this adult though. They were added to them. They were not behaving like them. They were, they were submitting to the culture of the church. Real members were added. It's not fake members. It's not members that be offended that you are saying, are you understanding me that I would say they want to leave? No, they were added. Real members. Authentic Christians. They got saved in that day and they got added. This is real growth, man. Are you understanding me? Yes, when people come and they want to be discipled, hey, are you understanding me? Like 3,000 people join just and they say we want to be discipled, want to, want to love Jesus. 
Oh, let me explain what this means to you. Three thousand people were committed to God. They added to that church that day. Like all they wanted was Jesus. They were in the church looking for business opportunity, looking for who to marry. Looking for are you understand? They are not there as opportunistic people. Are you understanding me? They were. You say, you know what shall we do? They were there because they wanted Jesus. They wanted to be like the disciples. They wanted to to grow. Are you understand? This is real church growth. This is not three thousand. It's not two hundred people came, and maybe ten people decided to not join us. And out of those ten people, said, they are struggling even nine. Today we call you with this in church. Let's know why you still come. Let, no, this is not this one well. You will still see. This is not the well. This is not the well. It's not the other that I will not see for three weeks. Will not see for. It's not. No, 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 no. This, this was they joined it and they joined the workforce. No, I'm telling you, that, you know, they joined me and they joined the workforce. They joined the workforce straight. Soldier straight. Soldier straight. Can you say soldier straight? Soldier straight. You know, they, they didn't visit, they didn't come in, they didn't come in. No, no, it's not a kind of members. They were not even started calling every other person. Who started visiting? That's why I don't want to me, said these days. I don't want to record me. I know you're serious. I don't mean about soldiers. 3,000 people in a day, oh, Lord, give all this kind of growth. When men come and they are on fire, and they just want Jesus, they are sold out. They are committed. Can I know what this kind of choice goes to you? These people are available for services. Oh, that I'm tired. They are not tired. Some say they come to church. Sunday morning, Sunday evening, they were there. All the people that they are there. So that members. If they are not going to come, it's for a genuine reason and they seek for permission. Responsible members. Sold out. Ready for them in, in a day. All oh, the church can grow in a day. I think church can grow in a day. But how? Love. And you still find out. Can we keep reading now? And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Are you understanding me? Yes, sir. In the apostles' doctrine, you see, they were listening to their pastor's teaching. Whatever they were saying was what they were doing. They continued in it. Like, ah, this is what pastor said we should do. They did it. They followed pastor's preaching, pastor's teaching. I would say, no member of this church should be caught fighting outside, though. Is there anything that provoked and they feel like fighting? Like, what do you remember? Father said, I was no member of this church should, work, should fight outside. What do they do? They don't fight. Because they continue in their position. Are you understanding me? So, pastors' word means a lot to them. Because they want to be like Jesus. There's no time. In the book of and in fellowship, and what? Fellowship. They're always in the gardens, in the meetings. They don't say, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. I feel like I'm having a dick. The migraine is worrying me. <laughs> I don't understand me. The sun is too much. I came out, the sun is too much. Weak Christians. No. Real Christians were had it. But not for yesterday. It was only the dust they go. I'm telling you, you can catch fire in a day. I don't understand me. You can do what? Of course, they keep building the fire, but they can catch fire in a day. It depends on what they meet on ground. Are you understanding me? You see, and once we build that atmosphere, where people can come by any day is love. When we love one another. And making of bread, give me an NLT. NLT. The few verse 32. All the people, you see now, all the people devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. And the fellowship, you see, come and see now. This is what we are doing today. So what we are doing today is to acknowledge the is to acknowledge the Lord of God in our midst and to ask for more. Yes. And to make a pledge that we commit ourselves to working out love in this church. <laughs> are you understanding me? You see, we are entering a covenant today. Maybe you are come to read your letter. You are taking a note. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what we are doing today. You are making a vow. Every of love is. You are telling me, praise God, say hallelujah in sharing of males. So, what we are doing today, are you hearing me? We want to acknowledge it, we want to ask, because I can't lie to you, there's love in this church. How many of you know that there's love in this church? How many of you have experienced love from this church? Some of you have experienced love. If you are not, you are far, you are not trying to, you know, or maybe you are not, you are, you are, you are a wicked person. <laughs> Amen. Praise God for everyone. 
Just hallelujah. You see, I want to show you the meaning of love is on this scripture. I told you from the beginning. What we are doing today is we want to acknowledge, want to acknowledge the love in our midst already. Yes, there's love here. Now, let there's love in this church. Yes, so, is there love in this church? Eh? Yeah, there's love in this church. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, we want, we want to acknowledge it. Yes, sir. I want to ask some more. I want to tell you that, Lord, we are committed to loving ourselves. Yes, sir. That's what we come to do today. Yeah. And that, that food is the symbol. This thing is very powerful. It's a symbol. It's what caps it. That, Lord, we are one family. No, 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 no. We are telling God to do. That, Lord, we thank the love we are putting in our midst. We want more. And we are committed to loving ourselves more and more. We are committed to walking in love. We are committed to walking out love in our midst. We are committed to loving one another as you have loved us. That's what we have come to reach today. That love love loves us. That's right. And we are and sharing in meals. Including the Lost Supper. You see, that is the only meal they had was not the Lost Supper. In shame, in meals, they were eating together. Okay, give me a verse for, for the next one. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostle performed many miracles and wondered, oh my God, you see, when we walk in love in this way, sight and wonders will be cheap in our midst. We walk in miracles. Keep it, let me close down. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Can you guys like love? Kind of that one that comes love. The next day, okay, they were three together. They were always meeting. They were meeting. You see, when they feel love, you want to meet. Are you understanding me? You see, when you are still dating, I want to see her every day. If you go to work, he's very tired. But you are having a weekend to go and see her. They want to see. When there is love, you want to come to church. Yes, now. You want to come to church now. When you know the church, you know people, they want to come to church because you want to come and see them. You see, for now, eh, if coming to see a brother and sister is the only reason you come to church, it's a valid reason. It's a valid reason. Keep doing it to you. Keep doing it to you. You want to come and see Jesus. Because you see, you won't see Jesus by seeing your brother. Yes. When you see your brother, you are seeing Jesus. Yes, sir. Because our husband is with one another and with the father and the son. Yes. When you truly love us, when you really love this church, you want to come to church. When all the people you want to come to church, you want to come to church Sunday morning. You want to come, you want to come Sunday evening. You want to come. Every time you say that, so you want to come. But ah, you know what? Uh, today again, I'll sit there in church. Ah, uh, please, my shoe, my shoe, my shoe. Anybody with my shoe, I don't want to be late. I'll sit there in church today. I'm going to see Emmanuel in church. Are you understanding me? Ah, I'm going to see, I'm going to see him press in church. I'm going to see him in church. You're happy. Oh, that one time he said, I was glad. What he said was, let us go to the house of the Lord. I was glad. I was glad because there's love. He loves the people there. He loves the other He loves the people. You see, when there's love, you will not miss church studies. If you love the church and you love the people. When there's love, you will not be begging you. You know, we don't even beg you in this church. We only care. Why didn't you come? We love you. Why didn't you come? You, you know, we never beg you to come to church. We will, it has it happened before. It will, it will never have gone for the. You, you don't beg you to come to church. You have to go back sliding. You don't beg you to come to church. You have to leave this church that day. Because you think you are no longer true to God. Yes. Ah! The day a new walk up, then when they come to church in this church, when they are begging you that this church has back sliding, we are falling from grace. Mm -hmm. but, but I am going to encourage you to come. Yes. yes. I am going to ask you why you didn't come. Yes. I am going to say we missed you. Yes. yes. Are you understanding me? But can I even go to the real matter? You see, if you truly love us, we truly love this church, we will not need to encourage you to come to church. We will not have to encourage you to come. You will encourage yourself. Are you hearing me? Have you ever dated before? Don't lie. Have you ever asked you many? Have you ever dated before? <laughs> have you ever dated before? Yes. The one that, that, one you dated, that one you dated, that one that you really love, that one. Did you used to encourage yourself to call him? Or you used to look forward to calling him? You did look forward to calling him? And you look forward to hearing his voice? You look forward to let him call him? Well, if guys don't call me, I don't want to send a message. You always look forward, right? Are you hearing me? You always look forward, right? Yes, eh? sir. Yeah, you always look forward to calling him. And that you have the opportunity, you always look forward to when you will see. Are you not telling me? Because you guys really love yourself, right? For me, forget about what happened. 
forget that one. Forget, forget, forget that one. You see, when you really love the church, eh, you look forward to the next service. Yes. You look forward to the next service. You look forward. You look forward to the next service. Nobody, nobody encourages you. Hello? Talk me. Talk me at the next service. Now I come. No. You don't love the church yet. You see? When you love the church, eh? If you mistakenly come to a church on Wednesday, you forget that there's no service on Wednesday. If you mistakenly come, you will forget. If when you get on again, I'll say, ah! I'm forgetting that today is Wednesday. Because his heart is there. Oh, his heart yearns for the water of Jerusalem. Ah, oh my God. His heart yearns for the tabernacle. His heart yearns for the brothers and sisters. Are you understanding me? When truly really love us, we will not beg you to come to church. We will not even have to encourage you. Are you understanding me? We will not encourage you to join the workforce. Because you know that work has to be done. Are you understanding me? Praise God forevermore. Yeah. Shout hallelujah. So you have to love your church. When you love God, we will not beg you to share flyer. We do desire. We are still telling you to share. Why should you be asking to share the flyer? Your business friends, we beg you to share it. We beg you to share your, your, your works online. Who beg you? <laughs> but we have to persuade you, eh, go and like the post, go and comment, share your status. Of course, the person will not do it. And you are claiming that you love because you don't love us, you don't lie. <laughs> you don't love us. When you love us, you, you listen to the pastor's message. You share with your friends. Yes. You say, come and listen to the pastor, come and hear my pastor's message. When you love them, you invite your friends to church. You tell them to come. When you love them, you will give. You will be sold out to be committed. Are you hearing me now? So they share everything they had. This is real love. Are you understanding me? Come and see this now. Come and see this now. They sold their property and possessions and share, and share the money with those in need. Can you see real love? Can you see that this is, can you see that is actually from love? Let's keep moving. See, when there's real love, there won't be lack in our midst. There won't be what? There won't be lack in our midst. Let's keep moving. Amen. Give me this one, give me this one in KJV. Amen. Praise God. Ah, uh, no, it's still verse 46. And they, and they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, so they kept meeting every day. You see, how many, how many days we meet in this church? Monday, Thursday, Sunday, then Saturday, wherever you are, your fellowship. This is the met every day. Are you understanding me? And praise God for you to hear the boy's voice every day. Ah! Are you understanding me? Every day she went to hear, but I wanted to hear her voice. Why to chat on to go? Because there's real love. Are you understanding me? But we meet many times in church, twice. In the church when the end, Saturdays from fellowship by and you're saying it's too much. You're saying you're telling, you're saying you don't have time. You don't love us. Are you understanding me? They have to be real love. Now here it is now. I'm breaking bread from house to house. Give me give me an NLT. I'm breaking what? I'm breaking bread from what? So they were eating in each other's houses. Met in homes for the Lord's Supper. You hear this now. I'm going to understand this Lord's Supper. I don't take it as spiritual. It's the continuing as it and share their meals with great joy. So they were and what and generosity. They were eating in their houses. They were eating together. Are you understanding? They were feasting together. Are you understanding me? So when people are ashamed to say, oh, maybe at the come your house come trouble. It's, it's even when it's not to come and eat. It's not a big deal. It's every day. It's every day. It's every day. You, your mother only come once. Hmm. You know that you think you couldn't even hide your food under the bed. <laughs> you had your pot. He has only come try, but when you see him, you couldn't even have the gas. You now use blanket to cover the because it's not smell out. You do not smell out, the smell will not come out. You see, they shared their meals. Are you listening to me now? So they were feasting together. They were doing what? 
together. They were feasting together. They were eating together. Are you hearing me now? But where did this feasting together come out from? It came out of love, that place of love. So this is love feast. Are you understanding me now? So they were feasting together. Are you hearing about our sisters? They were feasting together. Are you still together? I'm about to close now. They were feasting together because they had embraced the culture of love. Eh? They were feasting together because they had worked hard at loving themselves. So this was a feast that originated from a love walk. Are you understanding me? So this is what they were just eat. They were eating them because they really loved themselves. Uh, are you hearing me now? Some of them feasting together because they really love themselves. So this feast came forth because there was genuine love. Oh, can I tell you what? You, can I tell you what in a genuine love we produce? Genuine love will cause us to eat together. Yeah. Genuine love what? It cause us to eat. It cause us to eat, to share our meals, to eat together. That's one of the things that Jenny will produce. We'll be here together. Are we together now? Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So you see, this church feasted together because what? They loved one another. Praise Jesus. So this is love feast, right? Are we together? This is what? Love feast. The feast that originates from what? From love. Glory Center, Community Church, Uganda. Do we really love ourselves? You see, we want to eat together this morning, but I'm asking us, do we really love ourselves? I'm asking us. Because if, when we found them in the church in the, in the Bible, for the people who love themselves. I'm asking us, okay, brothers and sisters, we are going to eat together this morning. You see, but beyond the physical meal, I'm asking us, do we really love ourselves? We really love ourselves. And if we don't love ourselves as we are, as we are to yet, are we committed to loving ourselves? Yes, sir. Do we make a vow that we're going to love ourselves? Yes, sir. Are we committed to loving ourselves? Yes, sir. Are we committed to working out this love? Because yes, that's the only reason why we have this feast. Are we understanding now? Yes, sir. So we're going to feast together this morning. They're going to eat. You see, but you see, this feast is us telling heaven that we are carrying the love we have worked out in this church. That we are carrying the love we have put in our midst. And it's not saying again that we want more. It's not saying again that we are committed to loving ourselves. If you look at the baptism of love in this church, they are left to the point where they were selling what they had to take your food that you don't have. And they were feasting with each other. Brothers and sisters, you see, I don't want this to be lost on us, even as we eat. I don't understand it. They share their meals with great joy and generosity. Great joy and what? Generous. They were generous. And they had a lot of joy. Give, give me the next, the last verse. Oh my God. All the while praising God. How is it praising God? Praise. See, when we love in this man, when we love ourselves in this manner, our lives will be full of praises. Things that are praised that things that don't happen that will be making us praise God. You know what this what this means? We'll be enjoying a lot of miracles. Miracles. Miracles, testimonies. Don't forget that signs and wonders were what by the hands of the apostles. Are you understanding me now? So there's a lot of miracles that will be bringing God praise. Oh, look at this, it's so serious. And enjoying the good will of the people. You see, one way to enjoy favor is to love ourselves. Give me KJV. Are you understanding me now? And having favor with all the people. Are you understanding me? So a, a church can enjoy favor in a city. Are you understanding me? I don't know. A church in every city in you. In the air, tough one, tough one, tough one, tough one. And that's what you know. And that's what you know. 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 That's what
I don't know what you are doing. I don't know what you you are doing. I I don't know what you are doing. I don't know what you are I don't you are I I you I you I you you I I you you I you 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 I your life will attract favor when you love us, when you love your brothers and sisters. That's what it attracts favor to your life. When you love your church, when you love your brothers and sisters, are you understanding me? You are going to walk in favor. Favor, your life will attract a lot of favor. Are you understanding me? I told you church will grow by love. Yeah, read it. And the Lord added to the church daily such as had been faced. He kept adding to death. Yeah, 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 they need to number again. Maybe hundred per day, maybe two hundred, maybe two thousand per day. But we are one day, three thousand we are there. So imagine that not many people are being added every day. Oh, this became a very mega church. If I let that young people will come to a church, it will not be a church. Why? Some people chose to walk in love. Uh, are you understanding me? From one hundred twenty members, from one hundred twenty members, from one hundred twenty members, three thousand people join in the day. Later, I go to tell you how they How that is not five thousand people join in another day. You say church will not grow. You say church will grow and love ourselves. Are you understanding me? Are you understanding me? We have to come to the what? To love one another. You want to see our church grow? Are you, are you hearing me now? We have to do what? We have to love one another. We have to commit to love. I don't forget that love is hard work. Yes, sir. Because your brother, your, brother, your brother will offend you. He will be offensive. Are you hearing me? He will be annoying. He will be, he will be, he will be things that are irritating. But love is not irritable. Love does not keep record of wrongs. Love is patient, it is kind. Yes. Brothers and sisters, you, you know why love is like that? Because you see things that are opposite, opposite that love in your brother's life. So you have to act contrary. You see your brother's unkindness, but you have to love and be kind. You see your brother's irritating, irritability, but you have to be what? Not irritated. Are you understanding me? Glory center. Community church you go to. Are you going to love yourself? Yes, are you going to love yourself? Yes, are you sure you're going to love yourself? Yes, I promise you, if you love yourself, your church will grow. Our church will grow. It's going to grow. Can we pray and tell the Lord baptize us with your love? This is my prayer at all three night. <laughs> baptize us with your love, oh God. Baptize this church with your love. Oh Father, baptize glory, center, coming church you go with your love. <laughs> He wants a baptism of love, oh God.